M0FXB, let's download the firmware and the CPS for the Badgerton BJ8300. Shack in the box radio, VHF, UHF, CB, the HF bands, and, and a lot more airband. So go to the link I provide here. Okay, thanks to Badgerton. 8300, and we are focused on the 8300 today. The apps here as well for programming via your phone, and you can use your iPhone or your Android phone. But we've also got the CPS, which is the programming software, and the latest firmware, which they call ANC, and the downloads here. So click both of these like so, and it will go up to your downloads folder. And then just run, let's do the CPS first, which is this one here, the programming software double click and just go next, 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 next and open that up. It's a Bofeng UV 5R cable. I'll put the link in the description. Look, it's four pound here in the UK. Twin pin that you can see there. Just connect that to your radio. Leave it on in the normal way for now. Connect that and plug it into your computer. Just here. When it plugs in, you'll need to go to your Windows squares at the bottom here. Right click Device Manager and just get your COM port number. So this window appears, then scroll on the left, go to Compo, just here. Double click down and look, serial CH340 COM3. Very rare if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11 that you need to add a driver. And if you're still running Windows 7, Windows 8, I, I would highly advise that you update or get a new computer. There's such Desktop computers now are very low price now, uh, and you'll pick one up. Because in the ham radio hobby, you, I feel you really need uh, a Windows 10 computer at least. <clears throat> Once you've connected, then go across the top here to settings. And then you're looking for, you want serial port, which will open up. Now drop down, select three and remember to click OK and you're connected now. Then go read, OK? You just click here, read. And if it doesn't work the first time, just do it again. Either way, there you go. Let's click a couple of times and then start. Of course, make sure your, your cable's pushed right in. It's very common that they're not quite pushed in hard enough because of the plastic surround. So, now we know it's reading and we've got some memory channels here which i'll quickly show you uh, we, we're now confident we can also do our firmware so click ok and if you look here at the different channel options if we go to say one of my repeaters which is say here gb3wr so we've got the name in at the end here gb3wr at the beginning, we've got the receive frequency, the transmit frequency, and then the transmit tone drop down there. And we can set the power. It's five. Well, actually, it might be a 10 watt radio. Um, and going across, that's everything you need, really. And that's it. And then you can look at your settings. <clears throat> if you go to optional features, just all the settings you'd expect, like squelch, screen levels. Just, it says here language, timeout, you could change that so you can speak for longer by turning that off. And just explore. So on the A band here, we're going to show channel mode. And on the B band, we're going to show VFO mode where we can type the frequency. And you've got your beeps. And again here, let display mode, what's it going to show? Frequency, I think I'll put channel name on the A band and on the B band, I'm going to put frequency. Okay, so that's the sort of settings tab. If we go to, let's have a look, edit, uh, frequency mode. This is what the radio does when you press the, put it into VFO mode. So look, we've got here, I'm going to put in 434.550, which is my node that I use all the time. There you are. And airband 133850. And it works fine for airband. Let's see if it'll go in the memory though. It doesn't always go in memory. Seems to have gone in. Of course, it won't let you transmit anyway. And for the people that say, oh, what if you transmit on airband? It can't. <laughs> so um, anyway, and then now let's go to 
the sort of radio side, which is where they've embedded the receive only SSP. This will transmit on CB. You've got a CB frequency here, but only on FM. Okay, it will receive on AM. You can see that AM FM there, look. But only on FM will it transmit. And I feel that will always be the case. So, um, just quickly on the, the radio. So when you press one of the buttons, the bottom button, I believe. Okay, right, press and hold. Sorry about this. Exit. Press and hold the zero. There it goes. Press and hold the zero. You go into the SSB and it's using the center antenna only, um, which we will connect a wire to later. But you go into radio and it's here where you can start selecting look 7.155 meters lower sideband so if we click here edit and go to fm am ssb and because quite a few people have said to me how can they get the name to appear here see it says 40 meters and it's not done by the radio it's done by you so here the current frequency there so i can put a name in let's go further down let's put in three dot seven five oh and that would be and we can set the bandwidth and the fine tune here but that would be 80 meters so we name it the radio never knows that it's called 80 meters but it does know what frequency it's on and there's different ranges so you've got the sort of broadcast range at the beginning here the uh, let's call it the medium wave range here and then your the hf band you're going to put here let's have a look 150 to 300 so I would say probably going to put the 27.555 and um, yeah, I will call that one CB. I'm not seeing on here that we can set the mode, can we? Uh, oh, we can on the radio. There's modulation here. So yeah, we can set the mode there, whether it remembers it for each channel. Let's set this one to USB work mode. Ah, the channel. Channel. So we go to channel there. Hit that. If we go to upper sideband. Then go to the next channel. No, it stays. But yeah, anyway, you can change that on the radio. I think the radio might remember it. But anyway, that's it. So let's move on to the firmware. I don't want the video to be too long, but this is a, a fantastic radio that you've got here. Whether it's the badge tone or the rad tail, they're both very good radios. The only difference between this and the 7800 is it's got extra buttons, but that's the only difference. But it's still a nice set. So now let's go to the firmware download. So in our downloads here, one of them was called, there it is there, 0 0.10. Now if there's a newer one, someone let me know and send it me. But the newest one I can find on their site is 010. So we download it, and the first thing we open up is called the boot loader. So here's the folder. And there's the there's the actual bin file there. See the way BT82, that's the actual bin file, but we want the boot loader. So let's go back up. And we're looking for and I'll put a link into it. There it is there. I've got it on my Facebook page. Bin ANC bootloader zip. Double click that. And I, I also saw the bootloader appear when I downloaded this file here, version 08, uh, download, and it gave me this file. And in here was the bootloader. So we'll double click that, then go more info, run anyway. And you get this window appear. Now we want to select the file, I want the, the 10 version. There it is there. So as soon as I clicked it, it went to it, look. Three dots, ten, port, uh, three. Now we need to get it into update mode. So turn it off completely, and then press the orange button on the button beneath. If it doesn't go into update, you're just not pressing the buttons properly. I've had so many people message me. Just press again, then click update, and it goes into update mode. And that's it. So it's not the fastest. Three or four minutes and that'll go in. So be patient. Don't touch anything. Don't turn anything off. 
So then it just rebooted, which is great, and everything looks as normal. Let's press and hold the and unplug the cable like so. See if we can get it into HF mode. It's in channel mode. Now we can press menu, press it again, and then we can choose lower sideband AM FM. Airband just came in, so that was working fine. You've got channel mode, frequency steps, bandwidth there, fine tuning. If you um, press the, let's get it right, it's star, you can cycle through 1K, 3K bandwidth, AGC, and the fine tune as well, which seems to be adjusting. And go menu, go backwards, see if we can find the version. There it is, 1.0 or VO1. So that's it really. I mean, give it a go. I'm going to do some tests now, a little play. And you can see that the Bluetooth is turned on and that's uh, working great. I'll just quickly read from the radio. Yeah. Oh. Twin receive, memory channel, CTCSS. And then you can set up, look, we've got a button there for Spectrum. Search there, it's good menu. NOA, weather channel, Spectrum, scan. See if we can get Spectrum on before we finish. Oops, that's on radio mode. <laughs> Too many buttons. Press and hold. There it goes. There's the spectrum. Pretty sure that most of these buttons have got shortcuts. Yeah, they have. Number one, scanning. Quite fast, really. And airband on these are good. Press and hold two. Memory Add into memory channels three. Frequency step. step four. And you've got a full power. alphabet backlit keyboard. Power down four. Squelch. Squelch on five. Dual standby. Dual, dual watch. So you, you don't hear two, but you can uh, monitor two, which I think is good. Zero is is default. T turns on the HF side. And there's a delay as you switch between the different bands. But for, to, for such a small radio, it does it really well. It does it as good as any other radio. Even the new F Pro, the CTCSS on seven. Even the new Pro model, which I like, of course. Frequency step on eight and number nine. Offset amount. There's lock on half. That's just DTMF, look, like just short press. Then PTT. And you can also just press the PTT and dial as well. Uh, let's do a, a long press on the star. That's doing, it says it R, T. So, yeah, lots to pay with, isn't it? A and B. Oh, it's scanning when you press and hold the exit. Scanning the different bands. And I think that's enough for now. <laughs> Cheers, that's the CPS, the firmware, and a little tinker there. I'm going to come back and see if I can tune in some nice HF bands and show you that this work, the Badgerton works really well. I get asked the question quite often, which one, Radtail or Badgerton? It's up to you. You know, you have to decide. Um, they're both working hard to get the best firmware on their radios. Bye for now.